Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to a brand new Shed Rambles. Actually, I don't know what to call these videos, but I am rambling in the shed, aren't I? So it seems quite appropriate. I was going to wake up extra early tomorrow and film this, but it was raining, so I thought I would treat myself to a lay-in tomorrow and just film the video now. Although it's stopped, it's stopped raining now, <sighs> which is typical. I, f I feel like I'm cursed. Because every time the sunshine comes out and I put my sunglasses on, because I'm getting to that age now, <laughs> where I just end up frowning all the time when the sun's out. Um, yeah, every time I put my sunglasses on, the sun goes in. Uh, so yeah, it stopped raining, but I can hear thunder in the background. I, lo I love thunder and lightning. I love it. I will stand out in the rain. <laughs> to listen to it like I love it um anyway <laughs> I'm rambling on about the weather but while we're on the weather it's actually feels like summer now doesn't it it feels like the weather has changed we had such an awful start to the year it was incredibly wet and I feel like because of that and I know that I said we, we were on top of the garden <laughs> a month ago I do feel like we're a little bit behind now and that's because some of the seeds which we sowed direct into the ground like the parsnips and the carrots I mean even the Swiss chard they just didn't germinate because it was just too wet and actually too cold so we were we were pretty silly really to direct sow them and um, so we had to sort of do all of that again so yeah I feel like we are a little bit behind um, in some sense and also I feel like the compost that we've used to sow some of the seeds in in modules and things it's not very good it's not very good because I don't know they just seem quite stunted and and like I sowed the calendula back in March and they just haven't they haven't seemed to have grown much at all they you know they've grown and then and then they've just stopped but now I was going to plant them out today, <laughs> but I went over to where I was going to plant them and there's loads which is self-sown from last year. So I'm proper chuffed, proper chuffed with that. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the things that make us gardeners happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, apart from that, the garden is, is doing fine. It's doing fine. We are keeping on top of the weeds, which for the first time ever, it's amazing. Um, we're keeping on top of the weeds. I ridged up the potatoes. Uh, yeah, yesterday. Yesterday? Or the day before? Someone. Someone last week. Um, I ridged them up a little bit later than I would have liked, but we were away selling at Malvern Spring Show. Um, but again, they're growing really well. So they're all ridged up. Um, we started to plant quite a few things out. Um, I did direct sow some blotty beans the other day. I've planted some cut flowers out. Oh, the cornflower, uh, which is what I'm drinking, by the way. Earl Grain cornflower. I harvested the first three cornflowers. I mean, it's not a lot, is it? But hopefully it's the start of many. So all I've done is I've just tied them together, my three little stems I've just tied them together and I'm just hanging them in the shed so they can dry so hopefully hopefully um, I'll have enough by the end of the year to add to some Earl Grey tea leaves which I'm not growing because I can't <laughs> but what I will do is probably buy in just the pla uh, plain Earl Grey and then add my cornflower to it very exciting very exciting um what else is growing peas are fine but beans are fine uh onions are doing fine garlic's still there um what else oh my dad's planted out some runner beans <laughs> he's planted out half of them and then he's going to sow um the next half i think over the next couple of days 
so that they're successional because again we have too many runner beans and only me and my dad like runner beans so yeah we're, we're being extra careful with them this year polyton is doing fine as well we are trying to clear the area to plant the tomatoes out but the problem is the broad beans are growing in part of the bed where the some of the tomatoes are going and the broad beans are just ready to well getting ready to harvest we actually harvested the first handful yesterday <laughs> so we don't really want to rip them out um but yeah, it'll be fine it'll be fine and we're still harvesting lots of lettuce as well and we think the potatoes are ready to harvest so i was gonna maybe make a bit of a, a meal a nice meal just have um just have some new potatoes with lots of butter and, and some fresh broad beans uh, for lunch one day. So yeah, everything's doing fine. And, and the chickens. Now in the previous shed video and the tour, I think I talked about the chickens and introduced the chickens, the new ones, Hedwig, Ginny, <laughs> Nebula, I have nicknamed Nebula, who is the Polish crested bantam, which is my nephew's. He likes Guardians of the Galaxy. I've nicknamed her Pigeon because she just looks like an exotic pigeon. So I constantly call her Pigeon now, which is fine. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm pleased to say that they have settled in spectacularly. I had the best advice from um, a lovely lady. I think she commented on the YouTube video and I also saw her in person at Harrogate Flower Show. And she mentioned about putting the new chickens into the coop at night. So I did that after I came back from Harrogate. We had two weeks before the next garden show, so I made sure to do it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, See, so yeah, I put them in at night. <laughs> I actually sat outside the coop for like 20 minutes, just like listening. Um, but yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. So they've been living together now for three weeks. No fights, no, I mean, there's a little bit of pecking, but just normal, just normal pecking behavior. Um, the new ones are still a bit unsure of the original ones, like they won't really, I mean, when <laughs> when the original ones like run past them, like to get to me or something, they do panic a little bit. But I think that's just going to, that's just going to settle down, isn't it, over time and, and they'll get more comfortable and they get more confident. Um, but yeah, so happy, so happy. I was so over dramatic and so sensitive. <laughs> I'm such a huge animal lover, so yeah, I didn't like seeing them sort of peck each other and hurt each other. Um, so yeah, so, so happy that they're all friends now and it's nice when I go and tuck them in at night. I mean, I don't tuck them in, I just check them. <laughs> I'm not that, <laughs> not that of a sensitive person. Anyway, when I check them, in the evening it's nice to see like the new ones huddled up with the originals it's really cute um so yeah they're all friends they're all friends very happy chicken mama very happy and they're still free ranging so they don't come out into the kitchen garden now but they do stay in the orchard free ranging and the orchard looks amazing absolutely amazing it's safe to say that the wildflower seed mix has worked there's lots of flowers popping up um you lose the chickens in there because it's getting quite high. But yeah, it just looks really picturesque, really lovely. I love walking down through the path now and just seeing the orchard and, and seeing the chickens running through the, the flowers and, and the beehives do look very picturesque as well. Now let's talk about the bee situation. <laughs> Let me have a sip of my tea first. So, I have had all three beekeeping lessons now. Um, when did they have the third one? It must have been like a few weeks ago now. So in the, the last one, uh, we went into the apiary, so we suited up, 
we were um, assigned you know in little teams and we basically just had to um, examine the hives find the queen you know check everything was fine so we were taking all of the um what do you call them the frames <laughs> we were taking all the frames out it was so fascinating so like and it was so hypnotic looking you know holding these frames up and watching all these bees just doing all their business it was so so good it's definitely made me want to have bees so I think I will but not this year um, because the people in charge of our beekeeping course they were asking people you know who who was who wanted bees basically because the bees are going to be ready in June which is next month which is basically in a few weeks time I'm not ready I'm not ready and to be honest life I think it's going to be quite busy <laughs> this year. I've got a few projects on the go um, that I feel like are going to take up quite a lot of time this year, which is really exciting. But yeah, I just, I want bees, but I think I'm just going to do it next year. So yeah, I have sort of made a decision. <laughs> and also what I did think was actually, because I've done the beginner beekeeping course, you can do an intermediate one. So maybe I could do the intermediate one next year and then get the bees. Uh, but yeah, I do definitely want them because I have been speaking to a few people at the garden shows as well that keep bees and and they do say that the people who run the courses do try and put you, not try and put you off, but like, you know, <laughs> because when I was saying to people like, oh yeah, they say that you need to check them every week and you can't go on holiday, everybody was like, not that bad sort of thing so yeah um i'm going to get bees but just next year so that's exciting oh little birdie i can still hear the thunder though Ooh. oh and the wind's picking up uh so yeah chickens and bees oh yeah i mean i think i've covered it all <laughs> i think i've covered it all <laughs> Um, oh, actually, we might as well talk about the garden shows now. So we did Harrogate Flower Show, which was very wet and very, very cold. It was freezing. I could not believe how cold it was. I'm so glad that I took my scarf and my woolly hat because I was freezing. This was the end of April. It was the end of April and it was so, so cold. Um, which did affect the show quite a lot. The weather has such a huge impact on how well that we do. It, well, anyone does at the shows. And I mean, to be honest, if if it's wet and miserable and you were visiting, like you would just whiz around, wouldn't you? And then go home. Whereas when the sun's out, people spend all day there. They're all excited, you know, for the garden. So they, <laughs> they spend more. Um, and yeah. It's, it's just better in the sunshine, isn't it? Life is better in the sunshine. Uh, so Harrogate was cold and wet. <laughs> Malvern, on the other hand, was blooming well glorious. It was stunning. We were so incredibly lucky with the weather. Every day, so all four days, was beautiful. Beautiful. I was wearing shorts and dresses and yeah, Everyone was happy, everyone was enjoying themselves. It was a really good show. And actually, More Than Spring Show is one of my favourite shows. I'm not just to sell at, but just in general. Like, there's so much there. There's so many plants to buy. The floral marquee is amazing. There's a food hall. There's, oh, they did a um, festival of, of house plants this year, which was amazing. The show gardens were absolutely stunning this year. It was so many ideas it's just a really good show really good show so I do recommend it to visit if you're looking for a garden show to visit and I am always really jealous of the people that just go there for the day <laughs> because I want to do that and um I actually met some fellow YouTube gardeners who I met last year as well Oh, they seem like such a fun bunch of people. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping actually to go to the autumn show because we don't sell at the Northern Autumn Show. Well, we don't tend to. 
um, oh, my microphone's all over the place. We don't tend to sell at the autumn one, so yeah, I might meet up with them in the autumn one. But there was a time when I was walking back uh, to the van with like the sack trucks to get some more boxes of stuff that we'd sold. Um, and they were sat at a bench having a nice drink and they shouted out and I was just like, I'm working. <laughs> what is wrong with my microphone? Why does it keep going? I'm sorry if that's making a really weird noise. Um, so yeah, Malvern Show was amazing and now we have a big break. So the next show isn't until beginning of July, which is Hampton Court Flower Show, uh, which again is a really, really good show. Really good. I, pref I much prefer Hampton and Malvern than Chelsea. I don't like Chelsea. Just Chelsea's good if, to watch on the telly, isn't it? <laughs> Not to actually go. It's too busy. There's too many people. Um, so yeah, a bit of a break. I think we, we've got six weeks or so till the next one, which is nice. As much as I love doing the shows, it's hard work. It's so mentally and physically draining. <laughs> I love it. I love meeting people, talking to people. Um, but yes, it's manic and it's hard work. So I'm quite looking forward to just having some time off, um, get on with the garden and... Um, go on a few adventures and work on a particular project. <laughs> now, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have already heard about my latest project, which is a static caravan renovation. <laughs> now, I mentioned in the previous shed video about me getting my own space, and I, I have been looking at moving out for ages now and I have been looking at flats in town centres with no gardens uh, to rent so I wouldn't really be able to put my stamp on it and I would probably be paying like £700 a month to just sleep there <laughs> and spend weekends there because obviously I work from home um, so my parents have a static caravan in their garden and <laughs> I will be renovating it to turn into my very own little tiny, tiny house. I'm so excited about it. Like, honestly, my plans and ideas are just, yeah, I've got so many plans and ideas. Um, and <laughs> there's been quite a lot of interest actually on Instagram, so I put a reel on um, explaining the situation and it's been really popular and now I'm thinking that maybe I should do like a separate not like a separate YouTube channel but just do a separate video like a separate playlist like I do the tours and then I do the shed videos I'm thinking maybe I should start up like a caravan renovation video set of videos um, maybe start with a tour of the caravan um, and what I plan on doing to it and then yeah just all the DIY bits as we go along um, but basically first thing to do is to put new windows in double glazing doors insulate clad and then have fun inside I want to put like a little bit of a decking area I want to take some walls down make some rooms bigger open it up a bit um, yeah I'm so excited about it so excited I actually bought myself a house plant as a little housewarming gift um, <laughs> from Malvern Show. So I have two house plants now. I'm hoping to fill my tiny house with house plants at some point. Um, and I know it's going to take a little bit of time to create the space that I'm happy with, but I'm so excited, so excited to get started. Um, I've been ripping out pages out of old Country Living magazines as, in, as inspiration and things. Um, and I think I found the windows that I like. And I'm going to paint the kitchen cabinets and things. But yeah, so, so exciting. So I'm going to put wainy edge cladding on it, um, insulate it. I want to put like a, like a curved metal roof on so it looks like a big shepherd's hut. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to stop talking about it because I could talk about it for days um but yeah let me know if you think 
am doing some separate videos about it is a good idea and, and if you want to know more about it um yeah very very exciting so exciting <laughs> um and because of that i haven't really had much time to do much crafting so after i knitted this i did pick up an old project from four years ago had to work on but i've not really worked on it the only thing i have done is this jacket now this is an old um french work jacket so it's just like a cotton drill i call it a monty don jacket or monty jacket because monty don wears similar ones um <laughs> but yeah i picked it up from an antique fair with the idea to just wear it when i'm gardening but I wanted to put my stamp on it, I wanted to make it a little bit more girly, so I got the embroidery thread out and I embroidered some flowers on there so they look like they're growing out of the top pocket. I'm so happy with it. Of course I popped a little bee on the collar and a little flower on that collar and I was going to put some flowers in the bottom pockets as well. But my idea was that they would just get dirty and ruined because I'd be forever putting my hands in those pockets and yeah, they'd just get dirty, wouldn't they? So I just did it along the top. I've never embroidered before, so I had to watch like a video tutorial on YouTube, but it was really, really good. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Really happy. Super, super happy. So yeah, I haven't really been doing much crafting and I have been thinking about giving up sewing. <laughs> So my sewing machine actually broke a few months ago um, and but now I'm thinking I'm gonna have a tiny house I have way too many hobbies I probably need to get rid of a few I mean like not that I'm never gonna give up reading but now I'm thinking maybe I need to get like a Kindle or something because I don't think I'm gonna have room for all the books <laughs> um, so yeah yeah oh do you know what while we're on books I might as well Talk about the book reviews i say yeah i have been reading a lot a lot of books a lot of um romanticy books which are very spicy and a little bit smutty um, but i've been i've been enjoying them so much so i finished the court of thorns and roses series <sighs> it was so good and i got um the first two Fauna Glass books by Sarah J Mass as well, which I haven't started yet. I did read Powerless and Powerful by Lauren Roberts. Very, very good books. I finished them while we were at Morvan actually. <laughs> and then I went to a bookshop, the most beautiful bookshop I have ever been in, in Oswald Street, it's called Booker. I want to go back so bad, but like I don't need any more books. But they do have a calf. So I could go just for a cup of tea, can I? They have a nice art shop in Oswald Street as well. Um, anyway, while I was there, I, I picked up a book, Aura or Five. Um, and I have started that. I'm about a third of the way through. It's such a stunning book. It's so beautifully written. So it's called Why Women Grow by Alice Vincent. Um, it's just yeah it's so beautiful it's so emotional i've been sat crying <laughs> on on the table and chairs out there reading it because it's just so it's so lovely all these little stories um and interviews with women about why they garden basically there is a quite it does focus on children quite a lot um, so there are some stories about stillbirth and um, couples who can't conceive and things like that. So um, yeah, it's quite hard. It is quite hard to read, but it's it's worth it. Like it's just it's so emotional and beautiful, and I recommend it 100%. Like I say, I'm only a third of the way through, <laughs> um, and yeah, I just can't seem to put it down. So. Um, beautiful beautiful book i feel like i'm saying beautiful a lot but it is beautiful um also my reading list bookmark my goal is 12 books this year this is book number 12 
<laughs> we're only halfway through the year um, so yeah I have been reading quite a lot and then because I'm feeling generous I have two book reviews now it was my birthday at the end of April and I asked for this book for my birthday sorry I'm going to sort my microphone out again um, I asked for this book for my birthday because I just wanted inspiration and it and it's a it's a beautiful book <laughs> so it's the gardens of Arnie Maynard um, and it's what I call like a coffee table book because it's just full of beautiful pictures absolutely stunning pictures let me see if I can find um, some nice pictures for you there is actually a bit in here about kitchen gardens which I love um, but yeah it's just full of oh I don't know if you'll be able to see it properly full of really really spectacular photos of all the gardens which he's designed and worked on and I got this because we have a 15 meter long flower border which we basically just filled with random flowers which we like and we're actually digging another big flower bed so I'd quite like to sit down this winter and plan those beds out and actually properly <laughs> design them and choose flowers properly not just ones that look nice actually I'm quite fancy putting a couple of topiary balls in there as well I saw it on Gardens World the other day and it looks stunning uh, so yeah this was for inspiration basically for those flower borders but um it's a beautiful book. <laughs> Two beautiful books. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they're the book reviews. Um, the last thing I'm just going to quickly mention is the new addition to the shed, which I haven't hung up yet. Tis a disco ball. <laughs> yeah, I haven't hung it up yet. It's not going to be permanently hung uh, because obviously there's risk of fires and I don't want my shed to burn down um but yeah I got this because I seem to be dancing a lot more lately and I am currently obsessed with the tortured poets department by Taylor Swift um and yeah I just I seem to be singing and dancing quite a lot and I thought I'm going to turn the shed into like a little disco shed so I knew it needed a mirror ball it needed a disco ball I uh, see so yeah gonna have myself some solo shed discos <laughs> at some point <laughs> right I think that's about it last thing I think I just said that just now but this is the last thing we are so close to ordering a greenhouse for the garden can you believe it um so close so that's pretty exciting we actually nearly ordered one at Malvern Garden Show but then we've changed the plans around a little bit. And I'll probably talk about this more in the tour, but basically we were going to go for a huge, like Victorian style dwarf wall greenhouse. And then we thought, well, actually that's just for looks because the only reason why we need a greenhouse is just to put seedlings in because we have the polytunnel and we're gonna have a big potting shed. Um, so we put our practical gardener hats on and decided on a slightly smaller one. So I think we're gonna go for about eight by 12, um, still sort of Victorian-esque, but just a simple greenhouse. Um, I'm so excited about it, but I will talk about that more in the tour video because I've rambled on for half an hour already and the rain has just started again. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna head inside for some dinner. But I really, really hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.